the drug landscape has changed. Illegal fentanyl has made its way into the drug supply. And it's a danger you might not see coming. A synthetic opioid up to 50 times stronger than heroin, up to 100 times stronger than morphine. It only takes the tiniest amount to cause a fatal overdose. A fraction of a raindrop or three grains of salt. Your drugs don't come with an ingredients list. Although fentanyl is being mixed into almost every kind of drug, you wouldn't be able to see it, or smell it, or taste it. Dr. Paul Janssen was a Belgian physician and a legendary figure in the field of pharmacology. Born on September 12, 1926, in Turnhout, Belgium, he founded Janssen Pharmaceutica, a company that would go on to develop numerous groundbreaking medications, including the potent opioid fentanyl. Janssen was inspired to pursue a career in medicine due to the influence of his father, a successful general practitioner. The tragic death of his four-year-old sister, from tubercular meningitis, solidified his resolve to dedicate his life to medical research. Janssen's academic journey began in Namur, Belgium, where he studied physics, biology, and chemistry during World War II. He later attended the Catholic University of Leuven and Ghent University, earning his medical degree in 1951. He earned a postdoctoral degree in 1956. In 1953, with a loan from his father, Paul Janssen established his own research laboratory in Turnhout. His early work led to the discovery of ambucetamide, an effective antispasmodic for menstrual pain. This success laid the foundation for Janssen Pharmaceutica, which he officially founded in 1956. One of Janssen's most significant contributions to medicine was the development of haloperidol in 1958, a major breakthrough in the treatment of schizophrenia. However, it was his work on fentanyl that would have a lasting impact on pain management and, unfortunately, on public health due to its potential for misuse. In 1959, Dr. Janssen synthesized fentanyl based on structure activity relationship studies of meparidine. Fentanyl was found to be approximately 50 to 100 times more potent than morphine, making it an extremely effective analgesic for use in surgical anesthesia and the management of severe pain. Under Janssen's leadership, Janssen Pharmaceutica expanded globally, becoming part of Johnson & Johnson in 1961. The company continued to innovate, developing over 80 new medications, four of which are on the World Health Organization's list of essential medicines. In 1985, Janssen Pharmaceutica became the first Western pharmaceutical company to establish a factory in the People's Republic of China. Dr. Paul Janssen's contributions to pharmacology earned him numerous awards and honors, including more than 80 medical prizes and 22 honorary doctorates. In 1991, he was elevated to the Belgian nobility, receiving the title of baron. Janssen passed away on November 11, 2003, in Rome, but his legacy lives on through the Janssen Pharmaceutical Companies and the Dr. Paul Janssen Award for Biomedical Research established by Johnson & Johnson in his honor. Fentanyl, primarily used in operating rooms as an anesthetic and for managing severe pain in cancer patients, was introduced as an intravenous anesthetic under the brand name Sublimase. Over the years, various delivery methods were developed, including patches, lozenges, and nasal sprays, broadening its use in pain management. While fentanyl's medical benefits were clear, its potency also made it a target for misuse. In the early 2000s, illicitly manufactured fentanyl began to appear on the black market. This was driven by its high profit margins and the ease of synthesizing it compared to other opioids like heroin. Much of the illicit fentanyl was initially produced in China and then trafficked through Mexico into the United States.
We're tracking a troubling story in New Britain. That's where a one-year-old baby boy nearly died after ingesting fentanyl at a park. State officials tell us that earlier this month, the child was eating a cookie and dropped a piece of it on the ground. When picking it up, he also grabbed a piece of plastic with traces of fentanyl on it and he put it in his mouth. Paramedics rushed to the park. They were able to revive the boy with naloxone, which is something that state leaders believe everyone should have. People need to understand that uh, they need to carry it on them. They need to be aware that this is a possible outcome uh, for a kid like this kid who was just in the park, right? It needs to be in schools. It needs to be where children are playing and, and around uh, because fentanyl uh, is in a lot of places that it shouldn't be. Hundreds of people die from drug overdoses in Connecticut every year. Since 2020, 12 children under the age of five have died from ingesting fentanyl. The opioid crisis in the United States began with the overprescription of opioid painkillers in the 1990s. As regulations tightened and prescriptions became harder to obtain, many users turned to heroin. Fentanyl entered the scene as a cheaper, more potent alternative. It was often mixed with heroin or pressed into counterfeit pills, leading to a significant increase in overdose deaths. By 2016, fentanyl and its analogs had become the leading cause of opioid overdose deaths in the United States. What did she take? Did she take fentanyl? I don't know. Did she, she took take a line heroin? Of something and I don't know what it was. Go grab Narcan. I've got one. I don't know what it was. I don't know what it was. She took the same thing. Jesus, please. Ryan! Wash a one door 31. Looks like hey, we have an overdose. We have a second too. person that just hey, OD'd in the house. Hey, I need another police. He's on the way. He's on the way. Calm down. He's, 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 just tell me where it yeah, is. Yeah, give it to them. What? She's still breathing. Oh, you okay? Oh, 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 please, please step outside, ma'am. I need to go. Yeah. Watch a one north thirty one. We have a third overdosing. No, they are not. Just Washoe County right now. She's got a slow pulse. She's the only one that hasn't been Narcan yet, and she was the last to pass out. Uh, 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 copy. Dispatch, you copy the request. Dispatch, copy. I'll go ahead and put in for another... In response to the growing crisis, various strategies were implemented to combat the spread of fentanyl. The U.S. government increased efforts to detect and seize illicit fentanyl shipments, particularly at the border. The Drug Enforcement Administration, DEA, and Customs and Border Protection, CBP, have been pivotal in these efforts, utilizing advanced chemical analysis and intelligence sharing to track and intercept fentanyl and its precursors. Fentanyl continues to be a significant public health challenge. Over 70,000 Americans die from fentanyl overdoses each year, a number that has steadily increased over the past decade. Efforts to curb this trend include increasing access to treatment for opioid use disorder, expanding the availability of naloxone, a medication that can reverse opioid overdoses, and implementing stricter regulations on the production and distribution of fentanyl. Fentanyl's history is a complex tale of medical innovation turned public health nightmare. While it remains a critical tool in pain management, its potential for misuse and the resulting human toll cannot be ignored. Continued efforts from medical professionals, law enforcement, and policymakers are essential to mitigate the impact of this potent drug on society. 
Thank you for joining me on this exploration of fentanyl's history. If you found this video informative, share it with others who might benefit from understanding the profound impact of this powerful opioid.